Welcome everybody, this is Denny with my YouTube channel, Why Is This True? And joining me today is Carl Mollison from TeamArchangel.com. And Carl and I are continuing with our channeling series, and today we're going to do uh, the third channeling with Creator. So we've done two already, and these are where we are going to use uh, viewer questions, and Ch Carl is going to channel Creator, or God, or however you like to refer to um, the creator of the universe, the creator of our reality, so to speak. Um, so, that, like I say, this is our third one. We've done two already. The one that we, the second one that we did was also with viewer questions. And so we have nine questions today, and uh, two are from Karen, and then the following uh, five are from Gifford. And uh, there is a chance that I may uh, edit as we go because as we've seen in the past, sometimes a uh, subsequent question is answered in the first question. So we'll, we have to kind of be on our toes here because we don't want to uh, create a situation where we're un unnecessarily re you know, repeating ourselves or asking something that's already been answered. So thanks again, Carl, for doing this with me. I really appreciate it. Um, I, I, I want to just make one short note here and um, something I've been kind of concentrating on it's helped me quite a bit uh, especially as as it relates to um, my relationship with Carl and what we've been uh, working with here um, um, there, you know discernment is such an important thing and we try not to judge unnecessarily but we do need to use discernment as we kind of navigate through our life and one of the things that I've been trying to focus on is not so much what is being said but um, the fruits the fruits of of someone's activities, behaviors, um, life. And so I've been blessed by um, uh, interacting not only with Carl, but people that Carl's been working with. And so when you hear that term, which I think is from the Bible, judge them by their fruits, um, I think it's a good, it's a good, um, a good way to proceed. And I've heard nothing but good things about people's interaction with Carl. Uh, Carl has helped a lot of people. Carl's um, um, career prior to us doing something like this was all about helping people. It wasn't about being public. So I just wanted to point that out um, um, because there are some valid criticisms criticisms of what we're doing here, and those are those are noted. But I would encourage people before they get too far into it is to think of it in terms that, uh, in those kinds of terms, and I think it's a more balanced way. To, to come to c conclusions if that's what you're about. So anyway, I just want to put that out there, Carl, and thanks so much for, for uh, doing this with me. I know you're really busy. Yeah, well, thank you, Danny. I'm delighted to be here. I, I love what you're doing because it is very much in alignment, and it's in alignment with the divine realm. This is what is needed right now, here and now, for the entire planet to come together and to do it in partnership with the divine realm. That's the piece that's been missing all this time. We've flirted with religions, we've had our ups and downs, they're, uh, they're a mixed blessing, and many people have moved away as a consequence. We need to move back, back to God, back to the ultimate highest source of divine power. There is an ultimate creator, a prime creator of the universe, that's the energy we extend from and we're a part of. And it's our origin and it's our birthright to have a relationship and an interaction and even a dialogue. We have been corrupted so that is very unlikely to happen. It's quite a blessing to be able to bridge that gap. I still live a life of amazement that I can do this. And it wasn't simple. It was a, quite a long path to get to this point. And 
having access, I am privy to the divine perspective. And it's quite troubling because they're not happy with anything we're doing. They don't like any of our institutions. They don't like our, our uh, way of doing things. And it's because we've been corrupted. So we have these outside influences working behind the scenes, controlling us dramatically to a huge extent and darkening everything, Inter interrupting our uh, spiritual ascension and dragging us downward into worse and worse conduct and behavior. And that has karmic consequences because it comes back, circles back around. And then we have bigger problems as a consequence. So we've been creating a mountain of karmic debt down through the ages with repeated wars, preying on one another, uh, trying to stifle initiative and creativity to get people to march in lockstep with whatever the current dog might be, and on and on and on and on. So, so we've got to break this cycle. So the message I'm getting now is this is quite urgent. We need to really take action individually to bring this about. And the answer is simple, to look within and reach out to that highest divine source and make an agreement to be in alignment and to invite a relationship, to have that love of Creator flow in. And it can be very simple, you know, Creator of all that is, help me shine your light into the world, raise me up, lift my heart, and help all those around me to find their highest and best path. Something simple. That's all we need to do. And if everyone were to do that, things would shift all at once instead of so slowly and incrementally. So the piece that's missing, just one last thing here, the piece that's missing and all the would-be helpers and healers and prophets and gurus and spiritual leaders is God. The idea that we can do this ourselves and we just need to raise ourselves up, that we can manifest our way to a higher way of being and this will be the answer is a false assumption. We need divine help here. We can't really do this on our own. There's no shame in that because we have powerful enemies. We have dark spirits working against us and we have extraterrestrials working against us. And they're using mind control and manipulation big time across the board with everyone through multiple mechanisms. So we have these advanced forms of intelligence and we have been corrupted to minimize our capabilities. We're cut off from above, largely, by a partial disconnection from our higher selves. And we're disconnected from the lower part of our subconscious awareness, which knows all our past history and knows what's in the Akashic Records and worries about it. But it can't show us directly those things. But it beats up on the body. It adds stress. So we're floating in the middle, in the dark, in many, many ways. That's the dilemma. And that's why we can't just do this with our own power, our own steam. Yes, develop yourself. Do all the things you're doing now. But add that divine element in. It only takes a moment. I just did it. Hmm. Reach out. Say yes to God. You know, yes, please come help us. Raise me up. Raise everyone up. Remove anything negative that's blocking our progress, that's not divine, that's not in alignment with the light. Very simple. Darn. You don't have to be a, a, a religious scholar or a spiritual guru to do this. And this is inherent within everyone. We all have that spark, that spiritual spark, that resonance with divine truth. And that's because we're an extension of creator. So most people are being corrupted they're being fed happy talk that sounds good and it's fine as far as it goes. Love, forgiveness, being kind, treating others as you would have them 
treat you. All those principles are divine in their essence, but they're not the whole story. There is a divine force that's standing and watching and waiting for us to join up again. We've been pulled away, we've been misdirected away, and that's a choice. If we stay in that mode, we may go down. It's that simple. Getting back on track isn't that hard, but we have to decide to do it. So most channelers right now are being corrupted. They're not channeling who they think they are. I'm told again and again, more than 90% are being corrupted. They're not talking to archangels. They're not talking to a ascended master or a benevolent extraterrestrial. They're talking to one of the dark ones, dark spirits or one of the dark extraterrestrial races. And there are multiple ones here now among us and they are in charge. We are puppets, but we're a bit unruly, so they haven't been able to fully crush our spirit. And that's because the divine realm is holding them back. But they'll only do so much. The rest is up to us. If we weigh in independently and make that choice to be on the side of the light, the true light, then everything will, will change and we will prevail. So okay. I'll get off the soapbox. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I am quite pa passionate about this because this is deadly serious. Yeah. You know, and I've, I've been hesitant to talk about these things for some years because the message is so dark and so on. And I was given all that programming too. Yeah. You know, oh, just focus on the positive things. Don't bring up the negative. That will block your manifesting and you know et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I'm sorry. If you've got a tumor, you need to do something. Right. right. Pretending it's not there isn't the answer. You have to take some action to heal. So that's what we're talking about here. Let's heal this place. And heal the people who are working against us. That's the ultimate answer. Right. Right. And that's, that's a... what I do with my work. So I'm removing dark spirits, I'm removing extraterrestrial influences. And I always request healing for all those beings to raise them up. Right. So healing the perpetrator will heal the victims. Yeah, that's that's a really good point. Okay, well, thank you, Carl. Um, so if we, I, I think I'm ready to go. If you're ready, we can go ahead and uh, start the channeling session and we'll give the questions to creator. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it'll just take me uh, a minute or two to set some parameters for safety around the work. This is what everyone needs to do when they meditate, when they reach out for information or guidance, or just to explore things intuitively. Ask for safety while you're doing that. Okay. Because you will be shining a beacon out there, and anyone out there will see it. And they can come down and start to interact with you. It, it's just the way it is. It's like opening your door in the middle of the night and asking if anyone out there has got some useful knowledge or information. Can you come in and show me? Well, you, you probably wouldn't do that, <laughs> you know, without knowing a little bit more about who you're inviting in. But right. intuitively, people don't expect this could happen. But I'm here to tell you that happens all the time. There is tons of beings out there who do not mean well. And they they want your energy, and they'll come and prey on you. It's it's just like bacteria and viruses. So you just need a little good hygiene, and you can stay safe. That's all. So okay. okay. This is Source Creator speaking. Thank you for joining us. Joining us, Source Creator. Our actions such as abortion and assisted suicide deliberately seeded into the consciousness of humanity to create karmic debt. They can be. This is a very complex subject for people do these acts for many, many varied reasons. The basic message we wish to give humans at this point 
is that life is eternal. The soul is immortal. There are no truly big problems. Any act resulting in the death of another is not as grave as it might seem because of the ultimate longevity of all involved. But yet there will be karmic consequences and a karmic payback when harm is caused. So if the life that is taken has been prevented from flourishing and learning and helping the lives of the host and the family that the soul was destined to join, there will be a karmic consequence to any involved in taking that life. There are many circumstances where abortion is not the travesty it might seem to the true believer in sanctity of life. Many times the pregnancy is unwanted and the consequences of going forward would serve to cause much harm to many involved, especially the mother bearing the burden, but also to the young life who is nourished under very, very difficult circumstances where there may be lack, emotional abuse or neglect because of the stress and the need to make a living and have income to support the child and so on. In that context, abortion is the lesser of evils. So in the same sense, the two wrongs do not make a right. There are evils and lesser evils all have a karmic debt associated and all are undesirable. But sometimes life forces people to be at the fork of such a road and then they must choose. So it is difficult to know the future and so the people who continue to suffer with a difficult situation may be hewing to spiritual principles they have learned from the scriptures, for example. But it still may not be what is highest and best. So we would caution all to not judge others, for they do not truly know the particular circumstances and the destinies of those individuals. This is something unknowable to human at this point. The same is true of assisted suicide. There are circumstances where suffering is of such a tremendous magnitude. It is truly a blessing to have a way to escape. And because the individual and their growth and soul's progression is not served by being in constant torment. Such an act of assistance is a true blessing and will advance that soul journey and will be a blessing and an act of loving kindness on the part of the facilitator. But as with all things, rules are merely general guidelines, and there are always many nuances, many exceptions. So this allowance is very likely to be abused, where people would be brought to early termination through the greed of relatives who have the possibility of control and then act in selfish interest to terminate the life of a loved one. It can also be an inappropriate decision on the part of individuals who may be unbalanced, but temporarily so. And the assumption being that healing is impossible, it may be tempting to give in to what is seemingly desired by the person and 
to honor their wishes to exit when in fact the situation might be entirely healable with the proper healing intervention. We appreciate that very few have access to appropriate care because of the current state of affairs with medicine, in particular in psychological treatment and therapies. So this is a dilemma that will occur again and again and again. So the best we can do here is to say if the people who make the assistance do mean well and are acting from the heart with loving intention, even if this is not ideal, their karmic debt will be less than if they do so for selfish motives and with malicious intent. So, as in all choices in life, one does the best they can and ideally will choose to follow divine principles and act on the side of love and vote with love. This is the best guidance we can give in general terms. Okay, thank you. This is also from Karen. Has the opposition to such actions been deliberately exaggerated to ensure that much of humanity would dismiss the energetic consequences that may be buried in religious doc doctrine? All questions of morality have been heavily corrupted by the interlopers who would distort human experience and human thinking to embrace dark interpretations, in particular to minimize the divinity of human and to incur all manner of self-inflicted consequences, to make people feel unworthy, to make people feel they are victims and powerless, to make people feel guilty for their inclinations and the choices they might choose to make. The religions have done at best a passable job in bringing forward divine truth. And this is not because the truth has not come forward. It is because the truth has been massaged and altered and manipulated heavily. So you can no longer rely on sacred teachings to be divine. It is that simple. And this is why we are speaking with you here today to come forward in this way, to help set the record straight and to help iron out the kinks, the warp, the warpage of the divine message. So many things are given as lessons in morality that represent landmines inserted by the opposition, the dark forces working against humanity, knowing that humans will step on these and then will be harmed. And the harm will often come at their own hands and the hands of fellow human. This serves the darkness as happens in warfare. This is the dark winning each and every time there is a human conflict. They are pulling the strings and the people obey and take the lives of fellow humans, all of which serves the darkness and does not serve them in any way. So these are difficult issues and we would encourage a re-examination and reassessment across the board for all religions and all things connected to moral questions to put things to the test in each and every case 
does this serve love? Or is it a rule that is impossible to follow without causing harm in and of itself? This is quite important for humans need to be free thinkers, not followers of rules blindly with no consideration as to the consequences. This is how things have gotten to the point reached at present where the dogma has prevailed and people are now boxed in and trapped within their own spiritual teachings and believing in all manner of depravity as a consequence, believing in their hearts that it serves the divine when the opposite is the case. So this is our message here that you need not throw the baby out with the bath, so to speak, but to re-examine each and every recommendation for treating one another in a given way and putting that test to to bear does it help love to kill someone and cause pain to all their loved ones for the sake of a flag or the sake of a piece of land that can be claimed in ownership or for a cause of politics. This is an acid test in most respects and again is a start in reworking things and opening up to freedom of thought once again. Okay, thank you. The next question is from Gifford. Is, is it possible for Creator's plan to fail, or is it by definition predestined because it is Creator's plan? 